Welcome back to episode four of the Good Old Boys. I'm Mark. Bog beef. And today we're going to be talking about how politics are a stupid waste of time. What are we doing then? As we've told you guys every time that you've tuned in, this is a stupid waste of time. And everybody on some level understands that politics aren't really important. It's, it's, it's pretty much a hobby, like uh, the guys who are into model trains or whatever. Except actually this is a worse hobby because I don't think that the, the Lionel train guys ever, ever get angry at the trains. It's more like paying German women to stamp on your nuts. <laughs> I was going to say more like somebody who's really bad at golf and keeps playing it. But yeah, okay, that works too. If this was a show about like facts and shit, we could just end this show with two sentences. So We just turn it off right now. Yeah, the cost benefit you get out of voting or participating in politics is not worth it unless you're a head of industry, billionaire, or something like that. There's just no way it can be possibly well, worth it I, to drive your ass up there and vote. Or if Thank you. Or, End of the story. <laughs> yeah, or if your job is directly related to politics. You know, there are people who are – sure, if you're a writer for the New York Times, then it's not a waste of time. That's your livelihood. It's a waste of time for them to vote. You know how many of them I, – I was reading before, uh, many of the many of the New York Times editorial people, they don't vote. Oh, yeah. I mean, know we're not just talking about voting, though. I'm talking about even thinking about politics whatsoever. So what the hell are we doing? I think, okay, so we, we got past that, right? So there's that's the, the, the truth. I, no, I don't think we no, – no, no, no. I don't think we've gotten past it. I think it's kind of – it's worth saying, every like I said, everybody knows this intuitively, that this stuff is stupid – and it's inconsistent, and it really doesn't. You're not you're not accomplishing anything. But we do keep keep going back to it. It's very specific personality set, maybe. But when people get frustrated enough, they'll just say this is all bullshit. Now you, we you have to, we do that like twice a day. Yeah, uh, I, I assume other people are like that, but maybe they're not. Maybe this is just uh, this is just a thing for us. What I was driving at was I think there's a little bit more meat on the bone there. If you think about why exactly politics are a waste of time. Yeah. So I always, I always say this, that psychiatry and psychology is bullshit invented by the CIA to mind control people. But then I always got to say the piece or whatever. There's a there's a fundamental like uh, like uh, one of these like building block things of, of psychology and psychiatry shit is that basically like you need to the more you care about there's there's sort of a uh, there's a ratio that's how much you care about something and and uh, and how much control you have over that yeah. you need to keep those kind of in line and which makes politics there's three hundred fucking million people in this country what how much how much how much control do you have. Yeah, if you worry too, this is kind of a catchphrase uh, you've had for a long time. If you worry too much about things you can't control, you'll go insane. And I think that's the key. Modern politics is kind of like it's like a TV show, and you have different channels. You got the you know the mainstream channels, like Donald Trump and Ocasio Cortez or whatever. They're talking about their thing, but there's also the the smaller in you know uh, indie channels. Current Affairs magazine. They they have beefs. People. Uh, I'd like to yeah beef. I'd like to give that fucking bagel boss running that shit fucking. Be- <laughs> so cut that. <laughs> take hot takes. Don't read that piece of shit. By the way, continue. Someone once described that guy as like Willy as a left wing Willy Wonka. <laughs> I can't remember who it was, but it was great. So you have these various levels of engagement and different little battlefields, and I'm not. Saying that you, people shouldn't do that because I do it constantly. It's a, it's a, like one of the worst habits that, that I have is like caring about these things and, and getting involved with them. To me, the only real danger is that if you take it so seriously that you start getting angry with people that you know, you know the people who cut, who cut somebody out of their life because of the way they voted for president. Well, I mean, okay. Uh, I, Okay, I of course agree, but you gotta realize you're mm, you're pathologizing like half the people that do this shit because that's part of a party. That's that's part of the progressive party line now. You 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 have to do it. Then I would say, then I would say they don't all do it. I, I have many friends that are very progressive, and they're still my friends. However, once you start climbing into the cage on like Twitter and 
or you you read you know the, the the modern press is just like it's there's nothing to do with the reality that i see when i walk around but you know if you read that you're just going to see column after column it's like you know if you're if your grandpa doesn't isn't uh you know isn't down with the green new deal then then don't talk to that motherfucker again all this stuff it's it's, it's really sick but let's pretend that that pathology isn't the case because it isn't the case all the time and you know, it's not like i'm not trying to kiss i'm not trying to be sweet here it's just uh distinction matters when we're talking about this plus i brought it i mean i brought it up i was the one that says well hey you're, you're saying half the people are are sick in the head man I, as long as you don't let it affect your relationships with other people and if you don't let it affect your own mood too much it's just like there are some people who watch if, if their football team loses the super bowl they'll be depressed for like a week nobody would pretend that that's healthy or normal right no unless we're talking like auburn alabama or something yeah i'm sorry i forgot you're a sec guy maybe that was a bad example you're into the minor leagues or they they know what we're they know what we're trying to say so now knowing that politics are bullshit which like i said we secretly everybody even the most politically active person i think they realize that what is that mm. you don't you don't think so mm. well, let's just let, let that ride i don't even want to talk about the, the the counter case so accepting that premise okay i have to talk about it how can you say the, the midterm election doesn't matter when they're building they're loading babies in, into ovens and people are starving on so you, you hear all this fucking rhetoric you know what i'm, yeah, talking but I'm about. suspicious that those people really believe that good okay let's just move on then <laughs> okay so if we, if we if we have finally accepted the premise that that it's bullshit, where does that leave us when it comes to people who base their livelihoods around opinion making, uh, organizing stuff like that? While we're doing that, I just want to slide this in here. Maybe we could be looking for a model of how this how this affects us. Like uh, just to throw some out here, and we'll and we'll. Maybe we can come back to this later, but uh, one model would be, I heard you say one time it's like cigarettes or yes. something like, you know, you could go a day or two without them, but then you, you start you start getting itchy. That model is, is close with like an extended timeline. I can step away for a couple of weeks, and, and but then I got to come back. I mean, I've stepped away for a couple of months before, like uh, when, in, when I didn't realize you're thinking about other stuff, then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, capital gains. Yeah. A part of it is, part of it is we enjoy making ourselves angry, right? Oh yeah. I, well, maybe I shouldn't say we. I enjoy I enjoy reading things that make me angry for some reason, whatever that may be. Maybe there's different there's different flavors of the drug. Some of the so there's one of it would be like just getting in there and, and you want to you want to dice it up with people. Like uh, I haven't done this in a while, but every now and then you will click on some on some uh, tweet that's got like a billion replies or whatever, and I'll just scan through it looking for that one fucking. Uh, opinion that, that's that's out there and just find somebody that's saying it and then just uh and then go getting after them you know what i mean so there's that there's another thing that's like that i think is the best it's most valuable and i don't think everybody has it which is like i know which is like being able to do this where you you dice up with your friends you discuss the things that are going on no one's going to have hard feelings or something mm. and you're able to dice up what's going on as time has gone on the no, no one has hard feelings thing has become less and less uh, reliable but yeah i understand what you're saying in the intimate setting like that you can actually in, in, increase your understanding of the world which is in theory what you're trying to do when you think about politics in the first place correct yeah, I mean, we used to have a, a, a rather large circle of people. And it, it, did you ever see the? You ever see the beginning of Conan? <laughs> yes, the village. They put him on the wheel. Yeah. They put him on the wheel, and there's like 30, 30 kids in the wheel, and as they're getting older, more and more drop. Yeah, at the end, it's just it's just Arnold, the peak Arnold, she's shoving that thing around. Now it's just us. By the time it was just us, then like I would have to start. I would be the progressive and then debate you, uh, because we we ran out of progressives. <laughs> <laughs> ran out of people who put up with our bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. One way that you know that politics are bullshit is that there's currently several different flavors of rebranding happening right before our eyes where yeah. people who are, are ostensibly changing their entire, uh, I guess, ethos to something else. But yeah, if you really look at what they were and what they've, what they're becoming it's kind of the same thing with a different rapper on it. Yeah, of course. There's a lot of, <laughs> you know, people don't know what they are and they want to be a part of a story. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. There's, there's a lot of this stuff going on. 
uh, uh, there's a couple different flavors. I don't know which kind you want to talk about. So there's one where it, it's anything that's like any kind of free authority, authenticity, or anything like that. Everyone's grabbing all that stuff up. Obviously, on the left, the one that is it, that it's really getting fucking old. There's one reason why I don't know if you listen to this podcast. You're like, is there some point where these guys are going to tell us what you know what their ideological camp is? You, well, you can't you can't do that anymore because everyone just says that they're they're just an extreme bolshevik you know it's a free bingo square but uh you know in this case i think we i need to be a, a you know a radical status quo libtard i blame that espn show in the morning with skip bayless and the other guy yeah first take yeah the first one that pops in my mind is this we talked about in the first episode and you see this a lot in on right wing twitter uh the people who were pet who were peppy frogs and stuff Five, ten years ago, these people were hardcore libertarians, right? They might have dabbled in, in you know, like the alt-right, but they were basically libertarians. And now they're trad. And they're talking about uh, you know, crusade and shit like that. Everybody's going trad. It's a little, uh, first episode, if you, if you didn't get that one. <laughs> I think I think we went a little easy on trads the first one. I, I I can go both ways on it. I don't know. I think you're trying to look at it from the other angle. Though. Yeah, I'm think yeah I'm think, talking about these these right wing guys, but they they still act a lot like libertarians. I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure I understand how what they do is really different than what they you know what they would have done when they were for Ron Paul in 2008. This is part of the proof in my mind that a lot of this is just utter bullshit because to take such a, a, a sea change in, in ideology, it should be, that should like rack you to your core. You should, you should have all kinds of, of, of new ideas, but more importantly, you should be doing things differently in your own life, right? You've just changed your entire outlook on what's important. And yet you're still, <laughs> you're still beat. You're still beating off, taking drugs, playing video games. I don't know. I'm not, don't think I really buy it. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know the verse off the top of my head, but it, you render unto each man unto his deeds. This is like this is like one on one shit. Is that <sighs> people pick up on what kind of what kind of guy you are? You know, you don't need you don't you know you don't need to 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 unfurl a scroll and and, and give somebody uh, to tell somebody who's who's your favorite Merovingian king. You know, just. You're fine. People are pretty good at tuning in on, on what you're about. There's a, a thinker running around uh, that's like one. Of, that's like in my top three most respected right now. And he he was a libertarian a couple of years ago, and now he's trad. But you know he doesn't he doesn't talk like that. He just he just living. He's just doing it. You know. <sighs> A lot of it, there's a lot of it that's young guys, and I and and I can't really say shit to them because could you imagine being eighteen, nineteen right now? Jesus Christ! Yeah, I'm not about to climb on the people about <laughs> being too online because obviously I'm extremely fucking online. Yeah, <laughs> p- people get what you're about. It's you just mentioned the thinker that you that you like, and I won't mention them by name. because You can. Well, you're talking about distributist, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's an admirable guy based on his on what he says. Uh, I'm not saying he's the smartest man that God ever strung a gut through, but when he says things, he, sound, he sounds very sincere and, th- and, and thoughtful. I first caught wind of this guy, and then I remember I just kept sending you stuff. I was like, dude, you got to check this out. Dude, you gotta check this out. And I, I'm not—I don't think I'm like him at all. Uh, I'm not Catholic. I'm—I'm uh, I'm not trad or anything like that. I'm a son of a bitch Protestant, and I like the Marxist stuff. And I remember listening to the guy. I was like, "Where the hell did you get that take?" I was like, "Yeah, I, like, how did you get that? Nobody has shit like that." He—he he kept saying shit that that was. He just kept dropping just some dynamite takes, and then I started picking up on. It. There's a couple of reasons. I mean, so I'm, so I'm a Protestant. So, like, if there's such a still a thing as a, as Protestant um, academics or something like that, there ain't too damn many of them. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's kind of part of the deal. You know, every man's a king. It's, how, it's kind of how we roll. Everybody's a quarterback. It's kind of how we go. They, you know, they still, they have Notre Dame and, and they, and so and you start hearing this guy and I start picking up on it. And this is, I think this is one of the reasons why a track is a thing now is that 
so these are people so that they do have institutions and shit and what's what's big these days it's obviously the culture war we're we're kind of like like i mean we're part of we're part of groups of people that all that like all we're trying to do is is try to get people to shut the fuck up about the culture war right that's what our friends talk about all the time it's like please shut up about the culture war however i mean that's it's kind of <laughs> like uh angela nagel i heard her on financial times podcast like two weeks ago and she's like yeah you know you know i'm the um you know i'm, I'm the i'm the queen of a uh, of a. Uh, of uh this class stuff and, and and let's just let's just get that let's just take care of the corporations and we're not going to talk about culture and she's like you know i've about had it up to here i it, <laughs> I, I don't think there, i don't think there's any way to avoid this shit right so it reminds me it reminds me of early american history like in the eight or in the 1800s the there was <laughs> there were all these people in Congress who were desperately trying to get everybody to stop talking about slavery. They would make yeah. up, they made up rules like, you know, house rules that you couldn't, you couldn't even bring it up. Mm-hmm. So you just please everybody just shut up about this so we can talk about tariffs or some, anything, but this thing that people were you know, beating the shit out of each other and pulling guns on yeah. one another in Congress. It just it obviously never works because if that's the important thing, then people aren't going to shut up about it. Cause there's too much, there's too much to be gained by talking about it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's slinging some heat there. You might catch. Oh yeah, for that one, son. Well, uh, I mean, that's fine. Good. Uh, yeah, I know that's what you want. <laughs> if you listen to this, just go ahead and just start lighting him up on them DMs. Let me uh, cancel myself even more. Uh, the, sp- the specific thing that you were talking about was you were talking about tradcath, and there are different flavors of tradcath now. But in because they're basically the last. That's the last thing left. Like, there's no. They're the last institutional actor that that can tell progressives to fuck off. Yeah, there's there's like there's no the Protestant. You can you can join a based Protestant. Church. You can join a conservative Protestant church, and that's fine. But it's not by the nature of, of a Protestant. There's no there's no guy in Montgomery, Alabama that that that's calling in strikes. That's that's part of the Protestant deals. You're gonna you see that you're gonna see these people and they're leaning heavily on we we um we baptize them in the feed trough that's uh i, I don't I, I don't think we got i don't think that was uh laid out by uh, saint augustine but keep going <laughs> you're gonna see these people who they say um i'm this or that just to cover my ass a little bit the solutions that they offer and their morals are going to sound suspiciously like the morals and solutions of whatever political ideology they come from. To me, that isn't just the, the most yeah. dangerous and gross thing. That, don't feel free to not listen to me. Cause who the fuck am I? But if you're going to become trad, whatever cath, if you want to become trad Baptist, you want to become a, a Mennonite, you really should listen to the premise of this podcast and just completely throw out all the politics shit. Don't take, don't even take a side. Don't get into what does integralism mean. Don't get into what does, what would Jesus want me to do at the voting booth? You should just not, you should seriously not do that because all that really is, it, it's, it's like, you know how water will go down into the cracks of a mount of a, of a rock and freeze up and shatter it. And that's why people who, people who are obsessed with power will do that. And they will be some funding, by the way. They will inch into every little crevice of whatever institution it is that you love and that you're running to, that you're trying to escape modernity. You don't want them in there. Yeah, because when they get in there, temperature's going to drop and they're going to bust that shit wide open. And you're going to be right back where you started from, one way or another. This is what I'd say. I'm not Catholic, but if I was Catholic, you got brothers and sisters there at the service with you, they're in the other, other political party. I, I would I would highly suggest you leave that out because as soon as people get word that this is this, another Eastern Front's opened up, you, you ain't gonna want them in there. When you get down to it, politics really is uh, an argument that lay people have about power, right? Yeah, this is that's what it is. It's, it's a public nonstop struggle for power, and man, if you don't, you, we we can't do it twenty four seven. This place would go nuts. We're not supposed to, but I think that with social media, we easily could. And I guess, like I said, it, I find this, I find this all, and I find this all highly un-American. 
This is <laughs> it's kind of the deal. We got we got three hundred million people in here. However you feel about it, that's what, as soon as I start talking, as soon as I start hearing people talk about instituting some kind of religious government or something like that, it's like motherfucker. There's three hundred million people here. This ain't Denmark. We're there's we're not all gonna we're not. There's no way we're all going to be. There's no consensus anymore. I have grave concerns about that. I don't think these. I don't think these ideas of uh, a lot of these ideas you're, we're seeing out of this religious stuff. And, and I totally agree. You've worded it way better than I could. Uh, the water is trying to find cracks there, and it's 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 highly dangerous. Yeah, let me let me give an exam uh, give an example about how this creeps into the way we think about how this creeps in almost everything. Uh, th- three examples: things that I hate. Gun control, surveillance, censorship. In a vacuum, aside from gun control, but we won't get into that, everybody could agree that sur- people don't like surveillance and censorship in a vacuum. Almost no one would say, yeah, I'm for that. It's just, it's, it, it would be an extremely unpopular position. Yeah, people say, well, you know, we need to do censorship so that other people can talk. And you, you need to, you have to word it in a way that, that those things are still virtues. Right. And what's happening there is you're surrendering your common sense about something that you know is not a good idea for the opportunity to flex your muscle and exert power over over other people. I know that kind of sounds, I guess that sounds very libertarian, but it, I think it's accurate. You're you're doing that, and if you're a fan of like Glenn, uh, if you're a fan of like Glenn Greenwald, he lays this out. You're trading away. Your, your own rights, you're trading away your privacy for the benefit of slightly harming people you don't like. That's a bad deal. But we're trained to think that way and trained to do that. Uh, the, the smart thing to do, to do would be to say, I, I don't, I don't want to play this game. I don't like this thing. I don't, I don't want you to use it on people I hate. I don't want you to say that... Uh, I don't want to ban uh, 4chan, I, even though I hate 4chan, because I don't want to kick Alex Jones off the air. Uh, I don't want to ban the Chapo Trap House subreddit, even though I hate them, because this is the this is a bad idea. This is an Arby, sir. <laughs> but what, but what is this when you do this? You're exerting you're exerting power over other people. But we as individuals, that was, that was the very last laugh that joke's ever going to get. Right? <laughs> Keep going. You're exerting power over people, but because we're individuals and our our system is what it is, we don't really have any power. So we're exerting these like microscopic, the gravity of a of an ant, that level of power. But we're granting legitimacy to the people who are really who really do have power and are free to exert it over us in whatever way they see fit. Now maybe. It wouldn't matter if we we if we didn't give them legitimacy; they still would do it. Wouldn't you feel better about things if they just had to do it openly and against everyone's will? You know the the four chan thing. It just shows you how where we're at. Because I mean, it isn't four chan, eight chan like they're like the the computers are in like Somaliland or something because they're someone can't ban them. You're already already in a compromised position when you have speech ghettos to begin with. Yeah. You know, we've we've already worked our way, you know, halfway down to hell. We just keep going to thinking that we're getting temporary gains out of it. You know, I cringe a little bit every time you say power. Good son of a bitch. You know, no no one did that. You know, I never heard that shit so I, so I started talking to people who were fucking educated. Yeah, a lot of people are fucking obsessed with it. And if you're talking to a person who's obsessed with power and they're not a CEO, they're not a senator, they're not someone who's in position to actually wield it, you're talking to either a person who could, who's looking to make a career out of whatever it is they're advocating which is fine if you want to go along with that, but just keep in mind, they will throw your ass into a grain thresher at the first opportunity if they have to. Or you're, look, you're talking to someone who is in denial about the way things work, and they think that somehow, well, by virtue of, I guess, solidarity, we can take all these microscopic ants and stick them together and form a, a big enough chunk to, to tip the scale over to our side. I think that's utter bullshit. I don't think that solidarity is is really a thing that's probably an unpopular opinion to a lot of people listening 
today it's absurd. I've got a little pet theory about power. And this is going to sound ridiculous if you are educated because we're not. So, you know, we're doing the Plato cave thing. Because we're cavemen. Here's my theory about power. So I use models that are wrong and I just keep it's sort of like a like a double wide. And I just keep adding on to it. I got the Olympic swimming pool out back to double wide. You remember when libertarianism was a thing? Yeah, sure. It wasn't that long ago, really. They were very uh, reductionist. First off, they go so all you if you're like you know what I I feel like I want to be a libertarian. Do I need to do I need a degree or something like that? They're like no, you need to know the nap right. That's all you need to know. You need to know the non aggression principle. You just take this one you take this one rule and apply it everywhere, absolutely everywhere, and you're fine. And you know it does kind of match up with lots of different. If you had to have one sentence, whatever rule, you know you could you could do worse, but. So they just run with that. They try to put everything in terms of money because then you get then you get a universal. Then you can start doing math, right? Okay. If you can translate everything into a dollar value, then you can just sort of render objective analysis on absolutely everything. Insurance companies know how much a life in Congo versus a life in Denmark is worth and shit. You've heard of stuff right. like this, right? Quality where people just translate everything into a dollar value so they can have a quote-unquote objective analysis or anything i think that's total bullshit however okay so we're there right so we, we know what we're talking about there i think power is the social psychology version of that imagine you're running a poli side apartment right you get some bright guys you get some you get some mediocre guy guys and get it's be all women these days <laughs> but uh uh <laughs> <laughs> You get some bright balls and you get some dim ones, right? You need to transfer into their head some kind of working model of politics. Every motherfucker that comes through your program, right? So it's going to have to be simple. And what you're going to end up doing, you're going to end up just like the libertarians. You're going to give them a universal uh, uh, a universal measurement, and that's going to be power. And so in every situation, they're going to tell you, just look for the power, get the power. And it's the left-wing corduroy jacket version of money. What do you think of that? I can see that. If yeah, let's pretend that you were a space alien observing human beings from your flying saucer, and you were looking at uh, there's a there's a structure that has three humans in it. And there's a there's one there's a big human, a slightly smaller human, and there's a tiny human with them. And you observe uh, that there, there's there's a hierarchy at work. The, the the big human tells the tiny human what to do. You might you might send your report to the uh, back to the home world that there's a you know, this is a power structure yes you're surveying hundreds of planets you need to be able to convert it into some kind of but you see the problem here is that you're treating human beings like animals when you think this way because when i'm talking when i'm <laughs> describing it's a family it's it's a mom and a dad and a, and a baby and the, the you know the, the relationship between the, the the parents and the child is not the same as the relationship between a master and a slave or an employer and an employee but if you think of things in terms of power, well, they are kind of the same, right? Uh, your friend Sophie Lewis and her gestators mm -hmm. and abolishing the family, which we come back to oh, every time man. because it's just so juicy. If you if you think in those terms, then you will become a fucking lunatic. Let's try to get in the mood. We need to, to method act here. How much money would it take if I said you never got to see anything above a C cup for the rest of your life? They just never existed. They're just gone. Just deleted from from all human existence. Never ever again. You see some big old milkers. How much? How much money would that be worth? Yeah, yeah. It's a direct deposit. Mm. I don't really want to have to make that call. Right. You're, you're like, well, this isn't. This is a money. No. No. It's like how much would you, how much would the life of your child be worth? Yeah. It's not something you want to make. It's it's not you don't want to bring money into this, and you don't want to bring power into these relationships either. But boy, there are a lot of people who are just dying to do that. Oh, son of a bitch! You know, the, uh, oh, should uh, I not say that? No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, you know, of course there is power. You know, you, you know, you, you wait till your daddy gets home. You're gonna wear your ass out. <laughs> you, you don't get that room clean. Yeah, but power is very a very base part of human existence. I mean, it it, it is there, and it and, and they're correct. The people who are obsessed about it are correct that it's like it's everywhere. The problem is, is that like with anything else, if you deconstruct everything down that far, you start to wonder what's the point. What's the point of anything? If I'm thinking of you know my mom as in my relationship as a power dynamic, that's fucking depressing, right? Makes you kind of want to. Yeah. 
hang yourself. It's just sick. <laughs> well, sorry, <laughs> sorry you guys didn't hear that. But <laughs> sorry, uh, I, I've got my parents are, are not everybody has the best set of parents. My parents are wonderful. Yeah, mine too. So yeah, what, what I'm trying to bring this back around to is that <laughs> when you do politics, I pulled, you off, I pulled you off course like nine times. <laughs> I was just, I was just trying to say with the Nagel thing that, that everybody is – there's no one left, hardly, that, that's not dipping their toes in. Well, that's right because, like I said, what I was going to say is that when you do politics, you – this is – this is – exerting power real or imagined over other people and as time goes on it become it seems to be becoming more intense people feel it more intensely they're more intense in their desire to do it by the way but, you gave three examples of things that you're like you know man this is it's really rough if, if these things are on the table all the time you, you know that was why they put those those fucking things in the constitution <laughs> yeah well we as, as we know that's not really that doesn't matter okay yeah but you're exerting power over other people, real or imagined, when you're doing politics. And as time has gone on, the desire to do it has become more intense while the actual power that you wield is, is getting even smaller. So this is really kind of a scam this is really kind of a scam that's being run on us to convince us to go along with horrible things that'll have bad outcomes for everyone. It'll be done under the guise of popular will. You're giving you, the pretend power that you're wielding over other people will be used as actual power by people who do not care about us or anyone else and don't really care about anything other than being able to exert real world power. I see what you're saying. It, it, it's fucked up, man. I, I don't want to, I don't want to go black pill cause I'm not black pill. I feel, I feel pretty good. And I don't know. Maybe that, maybe I'm mistaken. No, but no, no, I'm not. Black- no, I agree. The, the black pill I have with that is basically that you got any aunts any, or any uncles that are on any committees, maybe at the local university or no, of at course your, not. No, no. There's like 1% of this, this fucking, yeah, I worked at eight to five. So all these places where all that people dicing out this kind of power, we're not included. That sucks. Well, I think that there's a, there's a way to avoid becoming black pilled over this. And that is, you it helps if you're stupid. That's my. That's my. Yes, opinion. that 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 actually does help quite a bit. And be determined to not play the game in the sense that you you don't want to enforce your will on other people unless it's something that you absolutely can't negotiate about. And I know that that's that's tricky because now people think that you know everything is that everything is, is super fucking important. But there, there's probably if you really if you really dig into what you believe, there's really probably only a few things that you could not tolerate being around. There's probably just a few things that you you couldn't stand for and you can't permit to happen. And those things, yeah, you should stand firm on that. But on the other things, maybe be be more willing to put up with other people's bullshit. And this this goes into the thing that I always say about, you know, we need to just dig a hole and hide in it. Yeah. We're really going back to, was it episode two now? I think so. Yeah. These kinds of things are not best settled at the ballot box. You should sell them with a community. You were talking about talking about uh, distributors back before, and in his last his last video, he quoted Chesterton. Quote: I I don't remember ever reading. It was a really good one. It was a de- it was a de- it was a defense of democracy and the defense of that. Pretty much going to run counter to what we're saying here, but it's a great point. He uh, Chesterton said that I'm paraphrasing now because I I guess told you guys before i'm too stupid to remember things verbatim but chesterton said if you're getting surgery you want someone to do that who's an expert but there are some things that a man should do for himself even if he's not good at them and i think that the examples were uh, raising his children cleaning up after himself democracy itself you should these decisions some of these decisions you should be making for yourself even if you're going to make the wrong decision it creates an inherent quality in a man to be responsible for himself in that way does that make sense it does it does um because what, what's the otherwise what's the argument against we should just get rid of democracy and have pe- pe- other people make okay. decisions for us yeah, we can just knock this out here real quick. So there's a, there's a thing where you where you when you're first growing up and they tell you about democracy. I don't know if it's this way now, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm born red, white, and blue. That all, every 
the virtues of America were instilled in me from an early age, right? So, so when I first started hearing critiques of of democracy, they, they you know, you really, really start fucking with me, like, like, hang on, hang on a second, Hoss, like, you know, <laughs> you know, my grandpa blood and died for that. That all right? Critiqued like all the psychos I got here, my, here myself. Um, so, you, so you're all in on democracy. You get pissed off, and then you think, well, wait a minute, this is stupid. You know, first off, first off, you've seen the last couple of elections. You're like, th- these were nobody's first picks, right? You end up with a lot of decisions that no one really likes. The virtues of America and and all that and all this stuff was uh, was imposed on me at an early age, and I was all for it. And you start hearing, uh, you start hearing critiques of democracy, and and it freaks you out at first. Um, then you get pissed off. Maybe election doesn't go the way you want, or you're like, this this, this isn't. Or, or or you're like why am uh, I putting up with this uh, shit? Yeah, right. Okay, so this gets you to the this gets you to the worst critique of democracy. This is like the but but you have to go through it. Everyone gets here. So the the first level is that wait a minute, why why are we taking a head count and like reaching a compromise when I would just what I would really prefer is just all all the things that I want put in place, just put those in place instead of having to reach a compromise. I've already given it away by saying the C word. Because as soon as you think about it for five seconds, you're like, oh, oh okay, so that's that's how we got to the, the voting stuff, was that otherwise everyone just stabs each other every 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 decade or two. And and that's how we decide it. But it's still going to be decided. There's still the reds and the blues, and they're still going to want to decide it. So they ended up you know, staying on the shoulders of giants, you're like, okay, well, let's just settle it with a vote. Now, I'm still, I, I don't think democracy is any good anymore, to be honest. I, I could come back, but right now, I don't think, right now, I would rather, um, this, this sounds fucked up, but I would even prefer it to give executive control to my enemies rather than settling it in a democracy. Uh, that may be crazy. Well, no, I, it, no, I don't think anybody can look at the state of, <laughs> of the of the country or the world today and and say you're 100 percent sure that democracy. That's burglary, by the way. I don't. That's what. That's that's that's, that's autism, by the way. That's that's a. Uh, um, I'm not really speak. I, I'm not speaking from some grand historical <laughs> tradition when I say that. I'm just saying, uh, yeah. How I would. Sc- how I would square the circle there is saying if you did get rid of democracy, which a lot of people say we should, and I, I it won't be it won't be chosen. It's just going to be fa- it's, it'll be like uh, it'll be like in Rome where they still they, you know they still had senators and shit for a long you time. You could yeah you could replace the like this the Chesterton idea of this is an important thing for you know the the moral core of a man to make these decisions himself. You could replace that with older types of, of civic engagement that we've pretty much gone to the wayside, but you would, you would have to do that if you got, if you got rid of even the, the vestiges of democracy, I think, because otherwise then we would become quite literally just consumers who have no other purpose, but to, you know, eat yeah. and, and buy shit. That's why people are clinging yeah. to. That's why people are clinging to politics these days, man. I, I I really think that because it's one of the last things that it's one of the last things. This is in theory not a, a trend, a, a monetary transaction. It's something that you have control over, even if it's an illusory feeling. You do feel like you you have a place in society. You are doing something. You have a purpose. All those things that we're missing from our lives now. Yeah, and son of a bitch, it's the worst place to get it. Yeah, because it doesn't work. Um, yeah, I mean, you know what fucks with me? You ever um, you flip on Twitter or something like that? You look on the news or whatever. You know, Robert Redford or something is like, uh, you know, here's all the sh- here's it's like, you know, all summer I've been thinking about the midterms, and and th- this is how I think it, it's gonna lay out. It's like, motherfucker, you're Robert Redford. Don't huh? you got something better to shoot you? <laughs> Banging the bejesus out of out of out of, out of models or something like uh, my alternative here's Nintendo. Like you, you got a Lamborghini, dog. Like what the hell are you doing here? Yeah, what is that? Is that just high level social? Uh... They st- they still got the bug to some extent, dude. Yeah, true. And they talk because they'll they'll say like embarrassing stuff about it. like it's it doesn't feel like it's part of some kind of media comeback tour. I mean, there is that version of it. We know that version. <laughs> yeah. 
the girl from Who's the Boss made a valiant run for that, right? That's before my time. You talking about the one that that, that chopped the uh, president's head off in effigy? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the Me Too lady, the one from Charlie Milana. A... Okay, well, yeah, that yeah, she's definitely doing it. the 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 redhead. If you we Catholic. if you're redheaded, you you're not held responsible for that. <laughs> They're supposed to be petty. <laughs> It's fine. Do we have anything else to? Is politics? Is it a way people are finding meaning in their lives? Do you think about? Do you think that's I think true? It's a way people try to. Some, I mean, it's a way, way me, some people try. I don't even like think about that. that. That's 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 despicable to me. This is this is an old an old story too. Because even back when things were boring, you know, twenty thirty years ago, you know, everybody would have that funny aunt who like wrote in letters to the newspaper constantly, and uh, you know, at, at Christmas would always talk about politics shit that you know it just annoy the hell out of everybody else. But that was like the only thing yeah. she really cared about. That son of a bitch that kept calling the C span in the morning and, and bringing up the the grassy knoll and shit. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was it was funny when that was a few people, but if you have an entire society of people who are like that, you know, things can get dicey pretty quickly. You remember when you were a kid, you'd go to go in the grocery store, you'd come out there, car, and there'd be a there'd be a manifesto under your under your uh, windshield wiper. <laughs> oh yeah, communicate from Lyndon Larouche. Yeah, it'd be about fluoride in the water. So that was that was that was. Now we give every one of these motherfuckers a, a social media account. I remember very distinctly. This was in like the late nineties. I was still a teenager. And I went to a someone, a beloved person died, and we were at the funeral. We were standing outside the the funeral home or, and I had a relative who was one of those people. And she said, you know, do you notice that the stop sign was turned around on route, you know, route 11, you know what that is, right? That's the, the Russians are, are turning the signs around to signal. So they know when they would know where to go when they invade. But it, it was, and it was, it was cute and funny because it's just this one crank. But now, uh, well, I, personally, I believe every conspiracy theory I hear now. So how yeah. far away am I from that? Yeah. yeah, it's a good it's a good way to go. You know, um, yeah, thank God my my parents they <laughs> politics didn't it didn't mean anything to them. I remember I was a little son of a bitch going to uh, uh, I was sixteen, seventeen, or something like that. I volunteered for the uh, for the Democratic Party one year, and two years later I, I volunteered for the Republican Party. I can't remember which order it was. Um, and just the way I was raised, it was just like, well, that's just the blue team and the red team. There's, there's, uh, you know, it's not any difference. It's, it's the Yankees and the Mets. <laughs> Imagine that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thinking back, like, how the hell? And this, this, that was, that was totally normal. Yeah, I will. I remember, I was a kid. My mom would drag me to vote every, you know, every uh, four years. And like one year, she vote. The first year she took me, it was like uh, Bush versus Dukakis, and she voted for Bush. And then like the next time, she voted for Clinton. And this was every four years she'd pay attention to, to politics. She would watch the debates, and whatever guy said the things she liked the most, she'd vote for him. That was in theory. That's how everybody's supposed to be, right? And she, mm-hmm. You know, my my grandma was still that way. She, uh, you know, she would get canceled times a million. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, she's a she's a church lady, uh, but um. She she voted for Hillary because she said uh, she said her husband's sorry, and that and it, it made her feel made her feel sorry for God her. God bless her. Yeah, I hate she's got to live with that sorry guy running around running around town. All these young girls that's that breaks my heart. And we've said this a million so we'll times, but vote. people like that are objectively much smarter than us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, yeah, uh, like return on investment, yeah. <clears throat> You don't get any. You yeah. don't get any return, and you can invest a lot of your time and your your uh, sanity in this nonsense. Yeah, you know another version of that. I don't, I don't want to get. I don't want to. I don't want to piss off people I like because there's a lot of people I like that have that are like this. But um, I have to say this shit because you brought up that power word. I'm just going to blame that because I don't. Present company excluded. If you're listening to this, you're fine. You're a beautiful person, but um. Anyone who has some kind of grand, I hate this because, okay, if you have a grand theory of politics that explains absolutely everything on the, on the, on earth, I wish you'd trust it a little less. And if you don't, don't be insulted when other people don't agree with it. 
Does that make it's any sense? Tell, it's you kind of somebody if you don't, they don't believe your religion, you shouldn't be insulted. You know, if you fervently believe it, you're going to be yeah, insulted. You, you know, you you know, it, I bet I bet it's beautiful, and you, you, know, you, you keep, it's like a magic. I mean, if you really believe that, then then you got a little magic power. You should keep, keep that close to your chest a little bit. Don't be fucking shocked when someone else is in because I know when you hear that whenever that power word slides around, someone read some book written by some fucking acid head in '68 and it explains everything you'd ever want to know about this concept and it's totally right about everything. And these motherfuckers they 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 get they act like uh, jihadists about it. And I don't believe you've got everything figured out, but if you do, um, I'm too stupid to manage a model like that. Sorry about that. Jesus Christ. We, we need to talk about something happy here. By the way, if you listen to this, we um we try uh, this episode's a little got, got a little nasty on it. It's it's kind of a little a little bit intentional. We we were uh, I can't remember why we were like you know we need to we need to get pissed off for this one. We need, we need to to drop a promo on these motherfuckers. I don't remember why, but we were we were very jovial. It's good to get it's it's good for <clears throat> it's good to get spun up like that for no particular reason every once in a while. Mm-hmm. That's probably the best. That's probably the best reason to get spun up. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, because usually the consequences are, are a lot less dire. Because you know, with all that being said, if you talk to me a week from now about some stupid, inconsequential political thing, I will be fully invested in it, and I will throw away all the stuff that I've said here to here today and jump right back into it because that's I can't help it. It's like a it's like a bad habit. He- he still loves you, honey. Uh, <laughs> if you're still with us, we hit a thousand listens, which is totally crazy. <laughs> Obviously, this is not a professional enterprise here. We're we're, we're not going to be going pro. But we got you know we get some feedback here and there. People people said they uh, uh, a couple people said they like listening to it. We get that auto zone endorsement. I'm willing to take some money. So uh, we appreciate y'all. We'll see you. Mm-hmm.